Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with feta cheese French toast. That's right, this does sound kind of crazy. And to be honest, when I first tried it, I did not think it would work, but it worked. It worked incredibly well, as in this is one of the best French toasts I've ever had, especially with the spiced honey syrup we're gonna serve it with, which was just an absolutely perfect pairing. And I gotta say, after experiencing this, I'm gonna have trouble going back to regular plain French toast. It really was that good. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And of course, to make French toast, the first thing you need is some nice thickly sliced French bread, which is hopefully nice and stale. And what we'll do is transfer those into a single layer and some kind of dish in which we will soak them with our custard, which is the next thing we will mix up. And for that, we will need two large eggs, plus a nice big pinch of salt, as well as a spoon of white sugar for just a touch of sweetness even though this overall is gonna be a fairly savory dish. And that's why we're only gonna add a couple of drops of vanilla, all right, just a touch, and then a fairly small pinch of cinnamon, and then last but not least, a little shake of cayenne, because why not? And that's it, we'll finish up with some heavy cream, at which point we'll take a whisk and give this a thorough mixing. And yes, you could probably use milk for this and it would be fine, but that little bit of extra fat in the cream really does make this a little more decadent and rich. But for something a little bit lighter, go ahead and use the milk. But either way, once that's mixed up, we'll go ahead and lose the whisk. And we will pour this batter over our stale, thickly sliced bread. And then once we have that transferred over, which I did painfully slowly for some reason, we'll grab some tongs and we will toss these slices around until they're thoroughly and evenly coated. And while I'm doing that, let's review the two keys to perfect French toast. All right, the first would be using stale bread so that it's nice and dry and it really soaks in this batter. And then the other key is we give this enough soaking time to allow for that batter to really saturate the bread. And that's why before we cook this, we're gonna wrap it up and pop it in the fridge for at least a few hours, or ideally overnight. But before we wrap this up, what we should do is take a spoon and spoon as much of that batter as we can over the tops. Which by the way, as you'll find out, is surprisingly satisfying. I don't know why that felt so good to do, but it really did. And that's it, once we've finished spooning, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And like I said, we'll pop that in the fridge for a few hours or until it's utterly and completely saturated. And while we're waiting for that, we can at any time go ahead and make our spiced honey syrup, which is gonna start not surprisingly with some honey. Oh, and you remember when we first bought this and it was beautifully clear and runny and looked like liquid glass? I miss that honey. But even though this one's a little bit crystallized from sitting around, it's gonna work perfectly. So don't worry if yours looks like this. And then to this, we will add a couple tablespoons of water and we will set our heat to medium. And while that comes up to temperature, we can go ahead and add some Aleppo chili flakes, which are not very spicy, but extremely fruity and flavorful. But of course, use whatever kind of chili flake you want or don't use any. I mean, it's your breakfast. And then we'll finish up with a nice big pinch of salt. And then besides stirring this together, all we have to do to finish this is basically wait for it to start to simmer at which point we'll cook it for about 30 seconds. And believe it or not, that's it. And even though it might seem a little bit thin at this point, as this cools and the molecules slow down, it will definitely thicken up. And of course, if it doesn't thicken up to your liking, just reduce it a little more. All right, so our spiced honey syrup is set. And assuming our bread is now fully soaked, we can move on to the feta. And what I have here is a beautiful hunk of French feta, which makes sense to me since this is French toast. And what we'll do is take a knife and cut off some nice thick slices. And yes, while you do this, you're gonna get lots of crumbles also, but don't worry, once our toast is cooking, the crumbles will work just as good as the slices. And the only reason we're even cutting slices is because those are a little faster and easier to apply to the bread. So if all you get is crumbles, don't worry. And then to cheese our toast, we'll go ahead and pull that out of the fridge and we will start pressing nice thick slices of feta into the surface. And right here, you can see what I meant about the slices. Right, those are just easier to place and press on than a bunch of little crumbles. But as long as we get almost complete coverage, it's really not gonna matter how you did it since the cheese is gonna melt anyway. Oh, and by the way, the other reason I chose French feta for this, above and beyond the fact that it's in the name of the recipe, is because French feta tends to be one of your more mild varieties and isn't quite as salty and funky as some fetas. But having said that, if you only have access to Greek feta or Bulgarian feta or even a domestic feta, I would go ahead and use those anyway, since those should work as well, and maybe even better. And that's it, once our bread's been fetid, or as we call it around the office, fetishized, 
we will head to the stove where we're going to place this cheese side down into a mixture of olive oil and butter that we've gotten nice and hot over medium high heat in definitely a nonstick pan. All right, that's kind of a key here. And then what we'll do is wait for that cheese to caramelize and brown before we flip these over, which is definitely going to take a few minutes, so do not be in a hurry. Okay, at first that cheese is going to melt and get kind of watery, but eventually that will turn into steam and be absorbed up into the bread, which is one reason this tastes so amazing. And then once that cheese dries out, it will start crustifying and caramelizing onto the bottom. And exactly how long that's going to take, I cannot tell you. Maybe it's three minutes, maybe it's five minutes, who knows? So you're going to have to make the call. I mean, you are after all the Inspector Clouseau of how long to go. And speaking of detectives, don't be afraid to peek underneath to see what's happening. Because it really does need to look like this before we turn it. And then what we'll do once that first side is nicely browned, and we've successfully flipped all those over, and arrange those in the most spatially optimal way, is we will lower our heat to medium, and we will cook that second side until it's nicely browned as well. Oh, and if you're wondering why we didn't apply feta to both sides of the bread, that's because we don't need to. And not only was that enough cheesy flavor, and of course easier just doing one side, but I thought putting cheese on both sides was just too much of a good thing. And when it comes to cooking, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And that's it, once our French toast is cooked, which means both sides are beautifully browned and it springs back to the touch and it doesn't feel mushy, we'll go ahead and remove that from the heat and we will serve two slices per order, which I'll be doing next to some beautiful fresh mandarin sections that I did toss with a little bit of our honey syrup. Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and spoon over a generous amount of that before finishing up with one last shake of Aleppo pepper flakes. And as far as the plating goes, there are a bunch of things I could have thrown on here to make for a better picture. Like maybe some pomegranate seeds, or maybe a chiffonade of mint on the fruit. But I decided that none of those things would make this better. And if an ingredient doesn't make a dish better, it makes it worse. So I just stuck with this very simple presentation, and I'm so glad I did. Because this, my friends, was one of the most delicious, most enjoyable things I've eaten in a long time. Breakfast or otherwise. Alright, I love regular French toast, but when you add into the mix crusty, caramelized chunks of feta cheese with the richness it adds, but also that salty, funky brininess, which by the way, was not overpowering at all. But anyway, when you add those elements to what already is a very delicious thing, this really was borderline magical. And I cannot think of a better sauce pairing than this simple but incredible spiced honey syrup. And yes, in case you're wondering, I did try this with maple syrup and it was very, very nice. But there's something about the combination between honey and feta that just pairs so perfectly, which is probably why it's been paired for like a thousand years. Okay, in the business, we call that a proven track record. And I would love to give you lots of extra tasty notes here, but I found this recipe a little tricky to describe. Okay, Michelle thought it was kind of reminiscent of a cheese Danish, which I would agree with, but at the same time, it really is a very unique experience, which I think you're just gonna have to try for yourself. And while I really did love everything about this vegetarian version, if we wanted to turn this into a little bit of a bigger breakfast, I would think this would be very nice paired with like a Mediterranean spice sausage, plus a couple poached eggs over the top. So I might try that next time. But whether you take this idea and run with it, or you make it exactly as shown, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.